you know, you you helped run Planned Parenthood. I guess. Pre- am I saying that right? I, I don't I, you know, I don't want to mischaracterize that. But you were president of former president of Planned Parenthood, right? That's correct. Uh, uh, and, you know, for most people, Planned Parenthood is Planned Parenthood is Planned Parenthood. Um, I actually had three different CEO positions with Planned Parenthood. First started out in West Texas. Got it. OK, yeah, uh, I'd read yeah, that. Uh, in, in Odessa, Midland. And like we had like uh, 17 West Texas counties. In fact, my husband just asked me, where was Loving County? He saw something about it in the, in the paper today. I said that was in my territory. There were 200 people there. And so, uh, so I started out there and then I went to Arizona and was the CEO of the affiliate in Arizona. And then I became the national president, which I did for nine years. So I had a 30 year career in all. With wow. Planner. That's yeah, that's unbelievable. That, that is so, that's so unbelievable. You know, it's been in the news a lot lately, uh, Planned Parenthood. Um, and I get, you know, people are trying to, I guess, one side of the aisle is trying to get it defunded um, and get it taken away which is quite odd to me. Um, one, because I think, I, I don't think really people understand what Planned Parenthood does. So maybe we should start there because I think that's where the confusion comes in. Uh, you know, uh, well, my wife, for instance, when we moved from Spain to, to America, ba- back from Spain, she used Planned Parenthood for the longest time to get just care and this and questions and all, you know, birth control pills and, and all, all kinds of different things. Um, and I don't think people understand that they offer, you know, all these other services. So, yeah, maybe we could go into that a little bit deeper of what, what Planned Parenthood is. Well, well, you, you, you started out by saying maybe I could give you some inspiration that, that things, things get better. And so that's a good place to start with that particular issue, because one of the things that, that is very true is that actually most people do know what Planned Parenthood does. And, uh, you know, when you survey the public, you find oh, okay. most people do know. And in fact, um, it, it's usually a, a stronger, uh, there's usually more support for Planned Parenthood than there is for almost any other institution, including either political party, the Chamber of Commerce, you name it. Wow. People know and like it. But you know what? It's the people who are naysayers who always are loud. And the people who are supportive, who are always quiet, and the people who are supportive need to learn not to be quiet. <laughs> they need to learn to speak up. And Good call. I know, apropos of what you were saying about your wife getting her health care there, I, I, I remember when we used to have picketers in, in in Arizona that I would have to walk through every day, and, and and sometimes when I would do like talk radio, they would do like, well, you got this side and you got that side, and I would say, and tell me what is the other side of a pap smear? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's the other side? <laughs> I, I don't get it. So I think the good news is most people do know uh, to this day, and I have not been with Planned Parenthood for now 15 years. And, and although I still get identified that way, no matter what, I always say you have the scarlet P on your head forever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but but the the uh, the thing is that that to this day, people will come up to me and say, you saved my life. And I know wow. what they mean. I know wow. what they mean. You know. It's, it's an organization that's there for people when they are most needed and for a wide range of things. So I think that's it. And I just learned not to, yeah, whatever. People can say whatever they want. They can think whatever they want. But, but I know that uh, if you know where your values are, if you know what your values are and you live by them, then it's all good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I love that. I didn't know uh, some of that stuff. That actually does make me feel um, a lot better about it, to, to be honest with you. Uh, that makes sense that the naysayers, as you put it, would be the loudest because that's usually uh, the case uh, with most things, right? The people that disagree with it get, get the loudest. Um, so, you, you know, what, um, okay, so we've got, uh, you know, pr- pro-choice and pro-life, which first of all, I kind of hate those terms. I don't know how you feel about those terms and splitting that up. I guess you kind of, you know, t- talked about it briefly just a second there, but you know, how there can be two sides to this argument is kind of an, an odd thing. And um, but those two terms. So I'm curious, first of all, what you think of those two terms of pro-life and pro-choice? Well, I, I'd like to just make both of them go away because, in yeah. church, uh, you know, you're, what this is really about. I, I honestly, these issues, those are first of all, let me just say those are usually terms that are used about abortion specifically, as opposed Correct. to a range of things that 
that are uh, that women's health care and family planning and all of these kinds of services that frankly, you know, 95% of Americans use birth control at some point in their lives. So again, where's the controversy? I don't forget it. You know, uh, you just have to know, you have to not get yourself thrown off. So I think both of those terms really ought to go away because in truth, what, what these issues are about and the reason I have moved from what I was doing with, with Planned Parenthood and reproductive health, which of course is very important. And I'm very grateful that I have had that opportunity. Uh, but, but the reason I have moved toward the larger canvas of women's leadership and gender parity in pay and power and position is because these issues are really about whether women are going to have an equal place in the world. It's about who gets to control women's lives, who gets to control the options women have in their lives. As somebody who was a teen mom, um, I, um, I, I, I had all three of my kids by the time I was 20, had married my high school sweetheart. And, you know, I mean, like I, I drank the Kool-Aid that this was what a woman's role was, which is what we were taught, you know, in these little Texas towns uh, in, yeah. as I was growing up. And, um, and then I kind of woke up and the thing that actually helped me wake up was in fact, uh, the birth control pill, the advent of the birth control pill that let me realize, oh, wait a minute, you know what? I could actually decide for myself when I have children and if I want to have more children or if I don't. And it enabled me to start college. It enabled me to start college when my youngest was four months old. And I started to community college and that's the other thing that I learned, which is that, you know, it doesn't matter where you start, just start, just yeah. start, do something that will help you, that will help you, uh, help you develop yourself. And it took 12 years for me to finish. But during that time, I had the opportunity to get involved in the civil rights movement and um, some other um, uh, community service work. And what I learned from that is that people People working together can make change. Yeah. People working together can make, even if you don't have any power when you start off. And so those are all the things that drive me and, and that led me ultimately to want to spend the third act of my life um, doing things that will, in the broader sense, bring about equality to women and men together. Because I think we are in this together, you know, um, we got to yeah. work this out together. I but but I but I have always believed, and I always said when I was with Planned Parenthood that these you know those those reproductive rights issues are really about women's role and place in the world. And if you believe women deserve an equal place in the world, well, then you know you need women need to be able to 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 control their own bodies. That's number one. But the other thing women need to have an equal place in the world is the ability to support themselves. Because when you can earn your own money, you don't have to stay in an abusive relationship. Yeah. You know, you it, it just changes, it changes the power balance entirely and it enables equality to happen. So that's why that's what drove me to try to figure out why women hadn't reached equality in leadership. Why I wrote my last book, No Excuses, Nine Ways Women Can Change How We Think About Power. And then that led me to start Take the Lead, which is the nonprofit organization whose mission is gender parity in leadership by 2025. And that's right. 2025. Where I, I love that. Yeah. You have to put wow. a stake in the ground, you know? You have to, have to set a goal. Right. Yeah. You got to set a goal. You got to set a finish line, right? Something to, to right. strive for. No, I love that. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Um, yeah. What am I, you know, that, that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's really inspiring to, to hear, to be honest with you, uh, especially during these times. Uh, it's good to know that there's people out there fighting, you know, for these things that um, some people, I think, want to do more in their lives. I'll be honest. I, I just don't think they know the way or time could be, you know, as well. They could have two or three jobs. I get that, too. I'm, I'm very respectful of that stuff. I, I don't get down. With, oh, you're not doing enough. Uh, you know, maybe they got their single mom. They got all this work. They don't have time to help the same way you, you might be able to help. Um, but you know, it's great that, you know, yeah, this is just, this is just oh, amazing. So yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. You, you first. No, I was just going to say there are different stages in life. 
Yeah. Good point. You know, when I was good home point. with three little kids, I, I couldn't do as much either. Yeah. Good point. So you do what yeah. you can do when you can do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the reason I, I brought up Planned Parenthood, I know it's part of your, your history uh, before, but it's just, it's been in the news so much and I personally have been seeing it so much and it being attacked, like I've never uh, seen it. And it's just such a, you know, it's just such an odd time. I, I think, um, you know, having grown up in Texas myself and, um, although I've lived a lot of other places and moved away and, and sort of came back, it's, Texas is still Texas. And, you know, I always grew up with, you know, that idea that, okay, women can't make that choice about having a child, right? They can't make the choice of abortion or not, not to have the abortion. And I've just never understood that argument. And, but it seems like it's, hasn't been at the forefront like it is now where, you know, they're just trying to attack it completely. And it's such a, I mean, people will make that, they'll make their vote on that one choice on that one, you know, that, that one policy, their whole vote will go, will go towards that. And, and I've even heard that the Catholic community is worried about Joe Biden being president, being a Catholic, but being, you know, pro-choice him being for, or whatever the word, you know, uh, we want to use, um, you know, so I'm curious what you think about that. What, you know, how does that sit well, with you? Well, well, first of all, it isn't worse than it has been. Trust me on that. You know, yeah, you did say that bad. earlier. Good point. It's just bad. It's just like, but, but it, but it is always about this. It's, it's always, it always is the same. Ultimately comes down to the same thing. And, um, you know, again, it's the, it, you're talking about voting patterns and when people are against something, they're more likely to be zealous and they're more likely to vote on that issue. When people are not so zealous, you know, when people are for something and usually um, people, you know, most people don't have a single issue that they vote on. They, they look yeah. at a lot of different things. And I think that I, I used to always say it was good that there were twice as many pro-choice people as anti because, because it took twice as many of us to, <laughs> to make the, to make things happen. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. I, I feel like, you know, it's like, it's like Congressman, the late Congressman John Lewis used to say, you got to make good trouble. It, it's a yeah. worthy thing. It's a worthy thing to do with your life to make good trouble. So sure. I just encourage people to, you know, not to, not to shy away. 